I were to tell you that, you know, if you were to wage a guess as to who they are, you would probably say they are politicians of Sweden or maybe, you know, celebrities of Sweden who are really popular in that country. Curators of Sweden are actually a group of ordinary Swedish citizens who had control of the Swedish Twitter handle for a, a number of years. Now, just think about what I just said. Imagine a country's national Twitter handle being controlled by average citizens. So, on a Monday, uh, an average citizen of Sweden would take control of the Twitter handle and post about where he works, what he does, who he meets. And at the end of seven days, he would introduce the next person and that person would carry on the same process. Now think about the trust and the, and the, and the belief that the country has on its citizens to give that responsibility to them. It's examples like these that bring me to my topic, which is that we are in the age of infinite marketing. So what do I mean by infinite marketing? Now, if you think about it, digital marketing and social media marketing has been there for a very long time. Brands have understood it and most of them have mastered it. But in the current environment, there's this seamless, boundaryless digital ecosystem thanks to technology, thanks to the access to information and data. And it's this environment which has led to a quantum shift in the power of, of the narrative from brands to the consumers. It's the consumers who are ruling the roost now. And brands which understand, accept, and embrace this change are the ones which will be successful in the future. So what is it that brands really need to do to survive this ecosystem? First and foremost, it's all about infinite transparency and trust. Now, companies who've made it big all these years, they have been placing a lot of importance to transparency. They've been transparent about who they are, what their product is, and what they believe in. But in the current scenario, there's a huge shift in how brands are leveraging technology to increase transparency that they have. There are brands who are already doing it. So there's a particular outdoor adventure brand who actually uses technology to connect with customers and build a great level of transparency to, uh, I mean, for them. So if you buy a, a jacket from the store, you can actually scan that product code and you can figure out exactly where the product was made, what materials were used, who made it, and the entire process of manufacturing that particular jacket. I'm not talking about the entire range of the store, I'm talking about that particular jacket. They do this because they're a brand which stands for sustainability and environmental activism. So they even go to the extent that once you have worn the, the jacket for almost like 10 years, you can actually go back to the store, give back the jacket, and you get credits to buy a new piece of clothing. That same jacket is then recycled and sold as new. That is how important sustainability is to them and that is how transparent they are about their processes. They are saying, hey, we've got nothing to hide. We believe in transparency, we believe in sus sustainability and this is what we have in front of you. You might say that this is not a very, very sustainable model in terms of revenues or in terms of profitability, but they've been doing great. And it's this kind of transparency that consumers, it's you millennials and Gen Zs really expect from brands. And also, frankly, you know, this kind of transparency can only be achieved if you believe that consumers have infinite control. So brands which realize that it's not them who have control, but co the consumers are the ones who will stand out in the future. All these days, brands do share control to the consumer, so you have products being co-created with consumers where they, in the process, there's participation from the consumers and the brand, and they build a product. But now, frankly, consumers have infinite control. 
I'll give you an example. A lot of you may have heard about the band called Foo Fighters. So in a small town called Cessna in Italy, they wanted to invite Foo Fighters to their town to perform. What they did was a group of thousand musicians got together. They called themselves the Rocking Thousand. They got together and played their favorite song, Learn to Fly, and recorded it in a video. At the end of the video, they appealed to Foo Fighters to come and play at their, at their town. When they uploaded the video on YouTube, it became a viral sensation overnight. In fact, it's got 50 million views till date. It became so viral that it reached Foo Fighters, who acknowledged the effort and came and played in this small town of Seshna the next year. Now, think about the power of consumers for in this example. In this entire process, it was these guys who created the video, edited it, promoted it, with zero intervention from the brand. Foo Fighters was not involved in the entire process. They got a lot of marketing mileage, they got a lot of people becoming aware of them, but frankly, they spent zero money on it. And this is the environment we are living in. In this environment, it's the consumers who are making or breaking it for the brands. Now, this was a positive spin for the brand. There are examples where negative spins have also happened. You might want to Google United Breaks Guitars and see what happened there. So in this, in this scenario where consumers have a lot of control, the basic formula for marketing is really evolving. There is a shift towards what I call many-to-many -many marketing. Now, if you look at the evolution of marketing, it started with one-to-many marketing. Now, what is that? That is, there is one source of information, which is the brand, and then they give out the communication on print media or TV or radio, and it reaches a multiple audience. With the advent of digital, it now became one-to-one -one marketing, where I have so much information about you that I can personalize the message for you, and the message which goes to you is very different from the message which goes to her. But in the current scenario, I feel there is a shift towards many-to-many -many marketing. Primarily, many-to-many -many marketing is where you have multiple sources of information about a particular brand. So today, if I'm a consumer and I want to find out some information about my favorite brand, I don't need to go to their website. I get that information from thousands of news sources which are out there. I get that information from thousands of social media handles which are out there. And that is what I'm looking at. And brands need to really accept that and work along in that ecosystem to get, have the maximum impact. There's a great example around two really famous ambassadors for climate change. So to your left, you have Leonardo DiCaprio, who's a very popular celebrity, and he's been doing some great work talking about climate change and its ill effects. But typically what he does is he creates documentaries, he'll write articles, and he's basically spreading the word, but the source is one, which is him. So he practices the art of one-to-many marketing, which I was mentioning earlier. To your right, you have this 15-year-old girl called Greta Thunberg, who's been in the news lately, thanks to her showdowns at the UN and you know, with Prime Minister Trump, uh, President Trump, sorry. And she has actually mastered the art of many-to-many -many marketing. So what she has done is she has rallied other school children along with her and said, you bunk one day of school to protest against climate change. These school children then involve other school children, and then slowly, slowly, it's become a mass movement where there are thousands of school children advocating for climate change. What this means is, frankly, there are thousands of Greta Thunbergs out there. There are even videos where people are actually using the voice and face of Greta Thunberg and passing on the message. What she has managed to achieve in a much shorter period of time, thanks to many-to-many -many marketing, is, is basically what the whole topic of infinite marketing is about. When you leverage many-to-many -many marketing, the impact is much higher than what you do with one-to-many marketing. In fact, I would probably put out a limb and say that the days of celebrity advertisements and celebrity marketing are slowly dying and will soon be over. It is now the time 
for infinite brand ambassadors. Traditionally, advertisement has always had one celebrity who's showcasing products and showcasing accessories, right? Now, if you talk about influencer marketing, which is basically you have social media influencers on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and they have millions of followers. And brands, what they do these days is they'll basically approach that, that influencer, pay them money to showcase their products. And this has been followed by brands across the globe. But I feel that that, that whole model of influencer marketing with celebrities is dying. It's now people who are the average people like you and me are the ones who are creating more impact. If you can have multitudes of people, multiple people like you and me promoting or influencing brands, they have much more impact. And it's frankly been happening in China. So in China, one of the largest e-commerce companies in China, they actually have an ecosystem of influencers who basically have maybe 5,000 followers or 10,000 followers each. But what this ecosystem of influencers does has more impact than what celebrities do. So for example, for their equivalent of a big billion day or a, or a mega sale day, these influencers reach out to the consumers and ask them what is it that they would want to see. Once they get a feel of what they want to, what the consumers actually want to see, they go back to the brands and the vendors and then they curate a collection along with them. On the day of the sale, they showcase that collection to them and through a pre-order mechanism, they get an estimate of the demand. But it doesn't really end there. They again go back to the vendors and through every step of the process, they're showcasing what is being done and it's being showcased on their, on their social media channel. At the end, when the product is ready and finally ready to be delivered, the, the revenue or the profits which are made are split between the parties. Now this is the future of influencer marketing where there's co-creation and you know, co-selling happening amongst various vendors. And the role of the e-commerce of the e company there is not really to participate in this whole process, but just to enable the process. So he's actually enabling the, the consumer, the vendor, and the influencer to, to work in this ecosystem. Not only does it actually sell, uh, improve supply chain for the, for the vendors, it also is a very minimal, uh, has a very minimal financial impact. And this is what the future is. Brands need to understand that there is a huge shift in how control, transparency, and the way you advertise and engage with consumers is happening. People, who, brands who embrace this are the ones who will be, you know, standing out in the future. So there, there's a quote which very nicely sums up what I feel about infinite marketing and where brands needs to be, which says, the beauty of life does not reside in certainty or conformity. It resides in the infinite possibilities of uncertainty. Thank you.